Welcome to another devlog for Towercraft, a roguelike tower defense game where you build the map and craft custom towers. In this video, I'll be covering what I was able to accomplish on days 20 and 21, which was saving and loading. Now, saving and loading is much easier said than done. But towers and tiles are potentially really difficult to save and load because there's so much data that, that's associated with them. But I realized the loader could use the same code that is used when the player spawns tiles and towers in. If I go into the loading script and then I add some delays, you'll see that the tiles and towers actually are placed in the exact order that the player placed them. So what's actually being saved? For the tile, it's actually really simple. It's the position and what formation of tower segments and path segments make up this tile and, and their positions. This is a tower segment and this is a path segment. If we take six of these and rotate them around this central point, we get our tiles. So which combination of these is what I save? So we have what it's made of and where it is. That's all we need. Here is the code that actually saves the map. There's a lot going on here, but what we really care about is this, the tile data dictionary. Each tile is saved as a dictionary. And in that dictionary, there's coordinates and path segments, which save the tile.coordinates, which is the vector three and the tile.path segments, which is that array of zeros and ones. Now I'm using the config file to save everything. I believe this is a Godot 4 feature, but basically it's a big dictionary. We're, we're saving all these tile dictionaries in this one big map dictionary. What does that look like? Like what's actually being saved? If we go to project and then open user data folder, we'll see we have two .cfg files. We care about the maps one. Uh, if we open that, we'll see we have all of the data that we're saving. Now we only care about the tiles dictionary right now. And you'll see in it, we have coordinates and path segments. Under coordinates, we have a vector three, and then path segments, we have the array. So that's how the tiles are being saved. What about the towers? Towers have a lot more to save than tiles. We have an array of mod resources. We'll need to save the artillery resource, the turret resource, and the foundation resource. We also have priority. This is just an index of the dropdown. And finally, where's the tower actually placed? Uh, we'll need to save which tile it's on. Now back in the saving code, you'll see that we are saving exactly what we just went over. Here is the dictionary tower data, and in it we're saving the coordinates. Oh, I forgot something. The turret's rotation. This normally does not matter, but for a fixed tower where the player sets the rotation of the tower, this is really important to save. You don't want the player having to reset it every time they reload the game. Now back to the code, uh, we have turret rotation, obviously, the artillery resource, the turret resource, the foundation resource, the mod resources array, and the priority. Now me being from the future, I know, I know some things. We're not on day 20 right now, we're, on a, we're actually on day like 35. I know there will be a lot more things that the tower needs to save. At the very least, there's the tower level, which doesn't exist yet, but it will. And there are also mod items that have stacking mechanics. For example, every kill the tower gets, the item gains a stack and it gets stat bonuses. That needs to be saved. I'm not able to save it in the resource. It's going to have to be an additional field, but I will cross that bridge when I get to it. Here's what's actually being saved. We have the resource, which is literally just a path to the file, the coordinates, uh, the foundation resource, the mod resources array, which is an array of resources, the priority index, the turret resource, and the turret's rotation, which is a vector three. So I think it would be interesting to like actually change this and see what happens. Um, so I've been working in large test. We can change the artillery resource. Instead of arrow, we can make it bullet. Uh, the foundation, we can make it rapid. Let's make this forward V3 instead of forward V1 and save. Let's load the large test map. I still have the delay in. And here it is. So we have the bullet, forward V3, and rapid. I love these save files. It's human readable, and that's extremely helpful for debugging. That's the basics of saving. Now, what about loading? All I need to do is iterate through the array of saved tile uh, data and place the tiles one by one. 
And that's exactly what I do. We first create a tile instance, add the tile instance to the current scene. We set the paths, we set the coordinates, and then we set placed. This is the same function that's used when the player is placing them. This function initializes all the variables, it creates the A star path, it places portals, it does everything I need without having to manually do it myself. Now, what about the tower? The tower is a little bit interesting because we're not actually instantiating a tower. What we're doing is calling the spawn tower function on the tile and we pass in the artillery turret and foundation. Now that's not all we have to do. The tower still needs, well, it's mod resources, the priority and the rotation. That's it, actually. <laughs> we just call spawn tower on tile and that's basically it. It's so much easier than trying to do it manually. And here is the spawn tower function for those who are curious. And that's saving and loading. We can place tiles. Note the order I'm placing them in. We can place a tower. Tower crafting is coming in the next devlog. We can save it. And when we reload it, it's placed back in the exact order that we, the player, placed it in. That's it for this devlog, guys. I really hope you enjoyed the video. Obviously, this isn't a tutorial on how to do saving and loading, but if you want one, let me know. But anyway, Leave a comment and like for the algorithm. Subscribe if you want to see more. And I really hope you have a great rest of your day. I'll see you in the next one.